Welcome back to my little channel. Today's video, I'm going to address a video made by Sargon of Akkad. Yes, I know his real name, I'm not going to use it, I'm going to use his stage name, why the hell not? He made a video called King Arthur and the Quest for the Red Pill. And I loved it, I really did. So this is not a criticism. This is an um, elaboration, perhaps? Not so much on the King Arthur's tale, but more about the concept of archetypes. Now, I've wanted to make a video about archetypes for a very, very long time, but I keep postponing it. I'm very good at procrastinating. I know, I really shouldn't. But his video basically showed these archetypes as well. Now, on a backdrop of King Arthur and the Round Table storyline, his story talks of what is the value of a woman. What do women crave? And he has a perfect explanation. It really well done. So absolutely no contest there. If you're interested, go watch his video. Links will be provided downstairs. Here's the thing, though. This isn't the only archetype story. Now, when we say certain things like archetypes, a lot of people think about Jungian psychology, which is understandable, but not really just. Don't get me wrong, Jungian's archetypes are great. He didn't make them up. He merely recognized them. So who made up these archetypes? And there is the kicker. Nobody made up the archetypes. But we all recognize them when we see them. For example, Geppetto in the story of Geppetto and Pinocchio is clearly an archetype of a father who wants to do well for his son, but feels inadequate. In the same story, Jiminy Cricket is basically the conscience of Pinocchio. So it's him talking to himself. This is what we see in a lot of other stories time and again as well. If you don't listen to your conscience, things go wrong. We even see this, for example, in Lord of the Rings, where Gollum is in conflict with himself. He is talking to his conscience. Why is this so interesting? Because our current society is doing everything they can to destroy the value of archetypes. And this comes from a certain group of people, mostly, I would say, cultural Marxists, some would say feminists. I would say, what's the difference? We could have a whole conversation like that. The thing is, though, it's not all good. It's not all bad. It just is. And the fact that it is is already a problem to these cultural Marxists. For example, if we're taking the main storyline about the princess, the princess always boils down to the same thing. She is a woman, she's in need of assistance, sorry, she's in need of assistance, and her main adversary is the old crone. Who's the old crone? The old crone can be anything uh, a mother, a stepmother, a witch, doesn't matter, but she is a woman. This is the fight of youth against old age. Now, you have the fight of huge against old age with men as well, but with women it is more profound. Women are very, how do you call it, influenced by the concept of being liked. Men, not so much. Women need, therefore, affirmation of who they are. And now I know people will say, well, you could nag a woman as well. Negative compliments. And this will work as well. And yeah, you know, you're wrong, but you're understandably wrong. No, a negative compliment doesn't work. It'll only make them sink deeper. But she'll listen to you because she might not be able to recognize you're not giving her a compliment, but you're pulling her down. Men are less affected by that. I'm not going to say not, but definitely less. And this is where the prince comes in. The prince is there to stand next to the princess. Not to fight her battles for her, but to strengthen her. To be her arm, so you say. 
or if you wish. And once the two of them are combined, they overcome and live happily ever after. Strength and heart. Strength is men, heart is woman. And in comes feminism, claiming that women can easily be as powerful. Yeah, this makes feminism, funny enough, the old crone. Set to destroy the princess. Yeah, that's not really true, but it is. There are so many stories of feminists, old feminists, regretting that they didn't have children, to name but one of the things that a family is supposed to provide for. It's not so, so much that it needs to provide for it as in the money. No, no, it's supposed to give you the, 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 the very fundaments needed to have children. The whole idea of a man and a woman are better at raising children. Well, there is some strong value to it. I mean, let's be honest. You need two parents. Oh, uh, two men can do it, two women can do it. Yeah, maybe. But then one of them is going to need to take the role of the strength and one of them is going to need to take the role of the heart. This is something that used to come natural to men and women. So why doesn't it come natural anymore? Back we are at the feet of the crown. Not the crown, sorry, the crone. Yeah, you said feminism is the crone. Yeah, but she is though. She destroys everything she touches. She is no longer touched by conscience because conscience has no grip on her. She is no longer touched by the influence of youth. Because she doesn't have youth. She is unable to care for others. Because as the old crone, nobody cares for her. So why should she care for others? But once people start caring for her, she will scare them off. Because how can you care for the old crone? She doesn't care for herself. Now these are things that the story of King Arthur that Carl uh, uses, Sagan of Akkad uses, show pretty well as well. There are numerous stories that show this, though not as clearly as the King Arthur story. Because in that one, the old crone and the princess are one and the same. Which in all fairness is true as well, though in most Jungian archetypes, it's either the princess or the old crone. The young princess can turn into the old crone. Though, in all fairness, there are also stories where the princess turns into the wise mother. This happens too. Far less often, mind you. But it does happen. The thing with archetypes is that they tell us not so much what they want us to see. They tell us what we are supposed to be. They tell the world how we, as a society, should function. And this is funny, because what stops the archetype storytelling? Well, religion did. Religion tried to stop the archetype storytelling. Why? Because of the narrative. Now, I'm not here to blame Christians or Muslims or Hindus or whatever. This is not about the individual. This is about the concept of religion. Now, if you have a religion with several gods, storytelling is a strong part of that. But if you have a religion with only one god, storytelling becomes a problem. Because the more you recognize certain patterns, the more you will notice that at times a story is going in one direction and at times a story is going into another direction. Which is completely fair for stories, but it's going to be a little bit different if that story is all about one and the same person or one and the same god. So then, all of a sudden, it becomes a problem. So religions kind of want you to stop storytelling. And this is kind of funny, because when did we see the breakdown of stories? Well, we saw that with the introduction of Christianity to the European continent. And it, for a quite long time, storytelling was hard. 
then eventually the brothers Grimm, for example, dedicated their time to put stories to paper. But some of the stories they put to paper have been so old that we can't even tell where they started. They didn't start with the Brothers Grimm. I mean, let's be honest, if we look at the old crone living in the forest, well, that's easily Baba Yaga. How old is Baba Yaga? We don't know. We can't tell the first story of Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga, by the way, is an old crone, a witch, from Russian Slavic folk tales. Certain tales go back so far that we instantly recognize them. We should go back to those days. No, that's not right. We shouldn't go back to those days. We shouldn't go back in time. But we should start remembering. We should start appreciating the archetypes that we live with. Not because everything else is bogus. No, no. But to remember who we are. Because if you are an ugly duckling and you're unsecure in who you are and you feel the world will hate you, etc., 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 it is good to realize that you too will turn into a big swan. And it is good to know that if you are a prince, there may be a princess out there who you can save. Just like if you're a princess, it's good to know that someone is out there who wants to save you. Yeah, but that's patriarchal. Women don't need saving by men. The very reason you say that proves you wrong. Because if it's a problem for you to be saved by a man, and you're 100% sure you don't need saving, Blah, 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 blah. What's uh, the story? Okay, women need men like fishes need bicycles. Well, yeah, sure. If that's true, you didn't have to say it. Who are you trying to convince? And the funny thing is, and this is kind of coming back to the, uh, the feminist paradox, because all of these things are intertwined, because society is intertwined, whether we like it or not. And archetypes always will play a strong role in this. If we go back to feminism, there is this feminist paradox. The more freedom they have, the more unhappy they are. Why? Because they fail to live up to what they feel they need. They stopped listening to Jiminy Cricket. And now Pinocchio is unhappy. Okay, so kudos for everyone who picked up on all the references I made. This is an interesting topic. It really is. I could talk on this for hours, but it's not that great a topic for a video, or at least I haven't figured out how to do this right. So I will keep thinking on bringing you, I hope to keep thinking on bringing you a better way to bring these stories out. But the funniest thing of all, and this is the main thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to thank Sargon for proving this with a very old King Arthurian story. This is true for every culture that had stories to tell their children. You will find so many overlap in the archetypes every story of every culture has. It's amazing to realize there are so many people out there who simply do not want to see it and want to claim that these are social constructs. Anyway, I am really curious to hear what you think of my little rant. And I will have a link downstairs so you can check out Sargon of Akkad's video, which I think is really good. Don't get me wrong, this is not a criticism. And I would love to have a talk with Sargon about this. But considering I'm a very small channel, I don't hold my breath. Don't get me wrong, I don't think he hasn't got the time for me. I do, however, understand that a lot of people would like his attention and he has only so many hours in a day. Anyway, if he gets to see this and he gets to respond to it or at least type something that would make my day ever so much brighter. Okay, stop that. 
but I do wish you would like, share and subscribe and share this. YouTube doesn't like me. I have wrong thought ideas. So there used to be a time when I was actually growing and growing and growing. And then the first apocalypse happened and I went from a video of 50,000 to a video of 200. Kind of says it all, don't you think? Like, share and subscribe. Criticism as always is more than welcome. Thank you for listening to me ramble and I hope to see you all next time.